in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed let it be a revelation in our hearts forever forever hallelujah praise the lord now pray one last prayer father give me an encounter tonight in the name of jesus everywhere inside outside give me an encounter tonight in the name of Jesus We are here for an encounter. Give me an encounter. Give me an encounter in the name of Jesus. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. It's a powerful prayer. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all. The the earth. let it cover all the earth. let it cover our lives oh god let it cover adonai lamb of god you are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, you're the Lord of lords. Let your kingdom reign in us. Adonai. It's our prayer tonight and forever. Adonai. Let your kingdom come. Remains our prayer. Let your kingdom come. Yeah. Let your kingdom reign.
Let your kingdom reign Let it rain Let it rain Would you open the floodgates of heaven Let it rain Let it rain Let it rain Open the floodgates of heaven God bless you. We thank the Lord for the opportunity that he provides for us week after week to learn. Um, let me speak especially for those of us who are here. Be very careful so that we never get to points where we become too familiar with the dealings of God you know sometimes the Bible says knowledge can puff up that means that when you get to a point where truly in experience you understand the ways of God chances are that you can plateau at a dimension in the spirit and believe that that is all there is in the pursuit and the knowledge of God and it's not it's not a state that may be done intentionally Usually, the Bible calls it the pride of life. The pride of life is different from pride. The pride of life is the self-glorification that comes in the face of obvious results. If you don't have results, you cannot have the pride of life. You can have pride, but not the pride of life. And I know that God has helped us, and we have to be very careful so that we are not lost in the folly of achievements. Achievements are important, but they can be very destructive. Very destructive. Hallelujah. And so it's important that our hearts continue to remain malleable and open. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to teach on something very powerful. I, I believe with all my heart, um, if we're not able to finish it tonight, we can continue um, perhaps after the miracle service. But, um, you know, we've been discussing along the lines of our convictions about God and the methodology. Please, I want you to listen very carefully there is a formula for knowing god that means that the pathway to the knowledge of god is not one that is dependent on creativity i've taught you and it will i will continue to repeat it again and again that when it has to do with your walking with god creativity is not required what is required is obedience and alignment. You are not at liberty to choose your pathway. You are not at liberty to choose your formula. It is not given to a man to choose how he wants to know God. That privilege was never given to the saints. 
at no time was any man given the privilege to invent his way of knowing God. Are we together? Creativity only becomes useful when that kingly dimension, when it has to do with the revelation to creation now, to creation, that's where creativity comes as one of the doorways to manifesting dominion. But as far as our work with God and our spiritual growth is concerned, we are not given the liberty to choose the pathway. The Bible says, ask for the ancient path. And when you find it, walk in it. That means that your creativity is not required. I say this because the man, please listen, man is like, is like a raw material. Are we together? And there is a process that God leads man through. And the object, what man should become, is already known in the heart of the Father. Are we together? And the Bible does not even hide it. He already tells us who and what we should be like. That means at the end of our journey, we should become like an embodiment that is personified in Jesus the Christ. Are we together now? So you pass a product from one end of the, the machine or whatever it is, and then you already have an expectation that if done well, this is what should happen. When a caterer or a chef gets to the kitchen to cook, he or she already has an idea, are we together, of what the meal should become. There is nobody who cooks properly and then does not have an idea and in many regards a clear picture of what the meal should become you don't have to wait for the food to cook to know what it should be from the start you already know are we together now many people can be with you in the kitchen there and not exactly know what because of the kind of combination but at the end you must know what you should be when a pilot is about to fly an airplane from one place to another the pilot, although the pilot may not see where he's going most of the time, the pilot already knows that I'm flying from Lagos to Abuja. I'm flying from Lagos to Kaduna and so on and so forth. It is not only God that wants to, that should know what we should be. Even the believer should have an idea of what he should become transformation is almost impossible when there is no reference you cannot become nothing so your transformation must be based on a reference i can tell you why many believers do not grow because one we are ignorant of the methodologies of growth number two we do not even have an idea we know in theory that we should be like by telling me that i should be i should be like um so 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 and so person and now i don't know that person so how can i know what if you tell me to dress promise please stand if you tell me to dress like promise right i will have to come i will have to see him and see how he dressed and then try to replicate the dressing are we together but if i have not been able to see promise i do not know him it's going to be difficult for me it's a standard that is almost impossible not because the raw materials are out of reach but there is no reference so the bible says looking up to jesus and he calls jesus not just savior jesus has many names in the bible and one of the names as far as our transformation is concerned is the author and the finisher of our faith meaning that when you come into the faith life the kingdom life your gaze should continually be on Jesus to refuse to be distracted by the vicissitudes of life and the things that can stem out of nowhere to set your gaze and focus on Jesus Christ and the Bible says that now the Lord is that spirit 
right he says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty then the bible goes further to say now we all with unveiled face beholding him not them not it money is it fame is it are we together promotion is it the bible says don't behold it you will get it but the object of your focus is beholding him as in a mirror he says we are changed from one dimension of glory to the other ever increasing glory even as by the spirit of the lord so the moment i set my gaze on jesus christ no matter what it is that happens once my gaze is fixed on him there is an assurance that eventually i will begin to look like the one that i'm gazing at and as far as i've read my bible i do not see anything in jesus that is not de desirable by men is it the crown upon his head is it the brightness of his glory is it the majesty that surrounds his throne the bible says if i look at it you know we want the things that are on in and around jesus and we want to get them looking away from him focusing on those things the throne room is a place of wealth and abundance the throne room is a place of majesty and splendor the throne room is a place of excellence the throne room is a place of power and so when i fix my eyes on jesus sooner or later you find out that you are looking at a man but then you are becoming him but not just him generically you are becoming every dimension of him you are seeing are we together so i fix my eyes on jesus and suddenly something begins to happen to my finances i fix my eyes on jesus something begins to happen to my influence I fix my eyes on Jesus something begins to happen to my understanding I fix my eyes on Jesus something begins to happen to my authority he says looking up to Jesus and if you do not have an idea of who that Jesus is then it is dangerous because there are many things if no one ever tried to be Jesus or God in the Bible it will be easy but now there are many gods in the bible and there are many saviors supposedly that means if you don't know the one you are looking for someone else can substitute him and say i am god and you will innocently look up to that person or that thing believing you are looking at god and you will be changed into that thing it's only that at the end you will look at your life and say this was not how i started there will be no representation of beauty and glory in your life are we together so pray a prayer before i start open my eyes oh lord grant me the miracle of open eyes mm. open my eyes to see a man cannot see until your eyes are opened. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this before we get to the word. The more I know God and the more I study scripture, the more I know what our problem is as men. Let me tell you one of the major problems of men we think revelation is something you get are we together we know that our lives are dependent on the light we have there is no place in scripture where a man was instructed to pursue light everywhere in scripture is light coming listen very carefully For as long as you believe you have the power to get light, then the light of God will never come. These truths that we teach, they are very exact. It's a body of spiritual knowledge that is given to you. Don't forget this scripture. A man can receive nothing 
a man can receive nothing receive nothing until it is given what god does not send to you from heaven can never enter your hand so th there's no point seeking around your assignment when the bible says seek and you will find the idea is not to go around the word seek there in its root word is not to search as it were is really the word position yourself it's more of a posture than it is of a searching there are things you can never see by studies no this is beyond the realm of education this is beyond the realm of intellect although your intellect will participate in communicating it but it does not come from the realm of intellect there is a wisdom that is sophia human wisdom is a product of age and your exposure to science but there is a wisdom that comes from above are we together now so I, I i need you to understand that these spiritual things are not necessarily things that you learn true revelation comes you are made a partaker you fellowship with that mystery it's a fellowship you are called into it that's the reason why when you communicate that wisdom the dimension of this it's ancient is older than you predates you predates your christian experience and even predates your level of spiritual exposure it tells you that wisdom is coming from a realm that is older higher and more superior than you so really the prayer is not to to search around the prayer is to position yourself so that that light can come to you but when that light comes to you and you receive it according to the authority of scripture the bible says you must arise and shine if that light comes you can know when the light has come by the possibilities that are now captured in your life i will continue to teach us that our lives not necessarily immediately but our lives with time and that time is not forever and that time is not your lifetime your lifetime is too long with time because we operate by times and seasons it becomes unfair to expect everything to happen in your life in one day no you are not living in the realm of eternity you are living in the realm of time so many things in your life are time dependent they are time dependent for three reasons one there is a spiritual law called the law of process and so there are things in life that the speed has already been regulated by god your being serious with god or not cannot increase the speed it will happen within that time then there there is time that is regulated that is based on your insight and obedience so you can slow down and increase that pace of achievement based on the insights that comes to you and the application of that truth and then of course time can be regulated based on the hindrances the spiritual hindrances are we together yes and the spiritual hindrances are only three number one covenants number two disobedience number three um what's the third one demonic attack the devil can hinder you i desire to come to you once and again but satan hindered us so satan can hinder men so i don't expect that pastor femi in one day on hearing the truth of scripture no matter how accurate i do not expect you to enter into the experiential fullness of everything overnight in fact in fact if that happens to you is proof that something went wrong and jesus 
grew in wisdom in stature in favor with God and with men are we together ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me you would have just said all over the earth but he broke it into dimensions Jerusalem Samaria Judea and to the utmost part of the earth so it's very very important but let me submit to you ask any man that has been granted access to the spirit of revelation if they are honest enough with you they will tell you it did not come from the abundance of the study of scripture the study of scripture is important it helps to prime your spirit man like you prime a pump but the real revelation comes from God to you it comes as light and then depends on the quality of your mental enlightenment to break it down into the truths that that light communicates God does not speak English God does not speak Greek he doesn't speak French he doesn't speak Spanish or Hausa or English he speaks light his language is light are we together yes and the only faculty of your tripartite being that can receive light is your spirit man so when that light comes upon your spirit man you have it but then it is not useful to you being locked up in the realm of the spirit and interfacing your spirit and your body where it is needed remember the earth realm is where all these spiritual realities are required they are not just required to remain in the realm of the spirit otherwise there will be no need for transformation once that light comes upon you that's enough but you need it translated here and now are we together and that technology of transfer is what we must learn the eyes of your understanding being flooded with light that you may know so you begin to have understanding and when you have understanding i've taught you that this body does not have power on its own are we together when your spirit leaves your body you are called dead dead means that your body is inactive so the body is a slave somewhat or better still the body is an executor the assignment of the body is to execute the conclusions of your spirit your soul whatever your body decides i mean whatever your spirit man decides or whatever is decided in the solical realm your body is now authorized to execute it so if my body continues to go to region and continues to capture experiences that are destructive to the health of my life and my destiny the problem is not the body the problem is that something is happening in the realm of the spirit and if you are a believer then the problem is not from your spirit man the problem is from the solical realm that's where the battle is now why because he that is joined to christ is one spirit are, are you getting this listen what i'm showing you now are, these are the fundamentals of christianity it's important that you know them it's amazing how many believers get born again and they are absolutely clueless about the faith life and we preachers have a lot of repentance to do in terms of the miscommunication of truths because we do not guide believers methodically we just randomly bring truths anyhow and so they continue to receive truths that are not progressive there is no synergy in their growth they cannot connect the usefulness of a revelation to another experience so they have many experiences but they are disjointed i can't see the relevance of this topic to this one there should be a sequence are we together yes there should be a sequence to your spiritual growth that means that come my dear that means i should be able to teach you something now and then you come you should hold her hands you should be able to connect what i taught you are we together like a ladder it should lead you to the next 
you stand here level of life and then i should connect you this is how growth happens if your truths are not sequential you will get a lot of spiritual information but not coordinated enough to reveal christ in your life this is the tragedy of many believers so when i switch on your laptop i see many sermons i see many topics i see many um exegesis of scripture theological dissertations that have come from different people different schools of ministry and so on and so forth and on the abundance of those information you can pride yourself to believe you are growing but the problem is that truths were supplied but not sequentially arranged are we together so somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about prosperity you don't know where it fits in the graph somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about character somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about service in the house of god are we together somewhere come in your spiritual life they taught you about demonology deliverance warfare somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about prayer are, 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 you, are you following me now somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about whatever it is now these informations are all useful but you find out that you have them yet your life does not testify that you have light the problem is not the scarceness of light the problem is the sequential arrangement of truth notice how jesus began to teach the people jesus officially started his mentorship with what we call the beatitudes it was an exe exegesis on the kingdom life gradually he began to lead them then he started getting deeper he got to a point that was so deep people ran away and he said will you also go he said to whom shall we go you alone have the words of life by the time we get to john 14 15 he's now introducing the holy spirit never did he introduce the holy spirit before that time then he got to a point where jesus himself was almost frustrated he said i have many things to tell you but ye cannot capacity capacity you don't have the capacity to bear them he says how be it no cause for concern when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you he didn't say he will give you truth many people want to get truth they don't want to be guided in truth listen carefully you can get truth but when you are guided you are shown the sequential arrangement of truth in a way and manner that can stamp the gates of hell this is where the problem is there is almost nothing you will tell an average believer that he's hearing for the first time it may just be in a more with more theological accuracy or with more intellectual prowess but the central thought is almost always known yet our results our lives are not looking for new things our lives are looking for a rearrangement a sequential arrangement something you knew before prosperity is why prosperity does not bless you are you getting what i'm saying now something that you should not hear there there are messages that you were supposed to hear first before hearing about success and since you did not hear it what is now light has turned to a sword that is killing you it is for this cause that he gave unto some apostles and prophets are we together and evangelists and pastors and teachers are we together now and then the bible says for the equipping the perfecting the word perfect in there is the maturing of the saints when you give birth to a baby a number of us here have children at the back we have our lovely children they're enjoying the comfort of the first days and months of their lives now only a wicked mother will give birth to a child and carry stock fish and put it in the mouth of that child or carry um cow tail are we together it doesn't mean cow tail is destructive 
to someone else that's an answered prayer at a level you will sit down and pray and god will supply but now cow tail will be required in that baby's life but somewhere but now when you give the child cow tail you give the child every kind of thing you will soon find out that your child is dead what killed the child food food did you ever learn that food can kill it's not only poison that kills it is not only wrong things that kill good things not arranged sequentially can kill the prosperity of fools shall destroy them it is not the prosperity is that that guy was a fool he needed to be wise first so you the word of god that was allocated to translate him from the realm of foolishness to wisdom and what is wisdom the bible says the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom so you taught that guy about prosperity and you did not inculcate in him the fear of god you watch what he would do to his mother or father when the money comes What I'm sharing is powerful. This is not even my message. I, I don't know how I got here. But this is powerful. Sometimes the Lord just distracts us like that to speak to people. It can be a prophetic word for someone. That look, 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 look. Your journey of ever learning. Your journey of priding yourself with the vastness of spiritual information will soon frustrate you. Because you will find out that someone does not have one tenth of your knowledge. But the little he has was so sequentially arranged. His life will show that he's growing properly. So the average church member doesn't even carry a Bible again. What's the point? Open to the book of First John. He said, I know this is the record. Look at the person who is talking. He daily loads us with benefits the person who is talking now does not have transport back home now i'm, I'm not talking of initial i don't ever blame any christian when it does not have results from the instance it is okay and it is normal but when you have dwelt around the place of light for a while and your life refuses to bear that witness then it's proof that something is wrong and we can easily diagnose the problem number one will be to check in the area of ignorance if we find out that ignorance is not the problem then number two we'll check the quality of the information be careful lest what you call light be darkness so you can call darkness light isaiah chapter 9 when you read i think verse 2 or thereabout I can't remember it says the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light until the great light came they didn't even know that what they were walking in is called darkness it says that they who were of the valley of the shadow of death upon them a light has come we can be galloping in a lot of ignorance justified either by science or culture etc and believe that based on the abundance of this information we have light there is the true light that lighted every man. There are other lights that cannot light any man. They can light other things, but they can't light men. Animals have a principle that they work with. Is that true? Most of the principles that the animals work with are not applicable to men the principle the animals work with is light but that light cannot light any man in their world and in their kingdom and in their sphere of reality remember all power belongs to god so the principle there is not an invention of science it is god's allocation that helps the animal kingdom to also behave well but because we are the highest of god's creation many of those truths they are truths but not applicable to us there are some of those truths that are applicable to us that's why god punishes foolish men by sending them back to the animal kingdom he said go and study my ways as given to the ants you are a lazy man you are a sluggard you are reducing yourself through laziness so i refer you 
to a lower dimension of my kingdom. Study the ants. That they do not have a king. They do not have this kind of organization. So when you study, you come back. Every time men refused to learn the laws of their realm, they were degraded. Nebuchadnezzar was turned into what? What was he turned into? For seven years, only his brain was left the brain of a man, but every other thing was that of a beast. And there was a lesson he refused to learn as a man. So when he became a beast, he learned that lesson. At the end of seven years, Nebuchadnezzar wrote a sermon you should pay attention to. He exalted the name of the Lord. Are we together now? They know not, neither will they understand. 82 and verse 5 of Psalms. They know not, neither will they understand. It says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, have I not said, or I have said, ye are God and all of you, not some, all of you are children of the most high. The next verse is a tragedy. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. So the tragedy, please hear me again. Sometimes. There are times that it's just plain ignorance. Are we together? But there are times that it is not ignorance. It is the inability to sequentially arrange truth. Many years ago, the Lord did something in my life. It's a personal dealing, so it's not something that you can build a doctrine out of. Um, the Lord prohibited me from studying my Bible for one week, complete one week. That's why I said it's a personal dealing. Yours may be an attack. Don't mistake in that what that it may be the same thing because God did not tell you. Yours is laxity. That's why I said it's a personalized dealings. Satan uses words to deceive men. Ye are clean through the word that I've spoken to you. For one week I did not read my Bible. Not because I didn't want to. I didn't understand the morale of the dealing until i was done and this was the whole object behind it the, the, the entire focus the entire objective behind it was to bring me to a point where i would realize that i was ever learning but never coming in experience to the knowledge of the truth are we together so i was getting you know those days well now we're still passionate about god but there's something about the journey of a believer it's like marathon once they blow the whistle on your mark get set ready sometimes you are even your, your blood is as hot as whatever go and you see someone running as if that is going to stop just at the door so that zeal that fire greek this concordance lexicon you know just study anything once you see a strange word ah pneumatology okay this is i should add this very quickly homenetics homiletics ah so we were just learning things that were just scattered revelation spiritual but scattered and the rate of change versus the the effort was not commensurate and it was a call for concern and so god was trying to save me trouble i would have been in big trouble now let me tell you why many christians are angry and don't believe that others are using god's power entirely i'll tell you why they are aware of the effort that was put in to arrive to to take one step it's like they did a labor of five years so when they see you soaring in the spirit, they say something is wrong. Something is wrong. I started learning 10 years, 7 years, 5 years ago. And you just came. And right now in 2 years, you are in this level. Not so. One of the greatest blessings that can happen to you is that when you are born again, 
God plants you under an anointing and plants you under a grace that sustains enough spiritual intelligence, enough balance. Huh? Spiritual intelligence and balance. These two things. Grace and truth. When it is grace alone, you are in trouble. When it is truth alone, you are still in trouble. It is full of grace and truth. So when God plants you under a ministry or under a man of God, many of us, the real tragedy in your life was not the attack that came from your foundation. The real tragedy, now I say that respectfully, was probably the spiritual system you were planted in when you got born again. Because your zeal made your heart open for any information. Unfortunately, many of us received chaps. It didn't kill you, but you were not healthy either. Because the prodigal son ate the food of, of pigs. He didn't die, but you can't say he was healthy. That's how it is spiritually. Please listen very carefully. Shepherds can destroy people. How did Moses find a wife? Read your Bible. It was shepherds that came to drive the women. Remember, the family where Moses' wife came from. They were shepherds. The women would come to feed their cattle. And those shepherds would come to drive them and fetch water. And Moses came and beat the living daylight out of those people. It is important. There are shepherds that watch their flock by night. But there are shepherds that kill their flocks. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart. Please listen to this because tomorrow you will be the one mentoring a lot of people. Spiritual growth is a school. It's a school with an exact curriculum. That God will help you. The sequential revelation of truth matters. It does. I'm telling you this. There are many things we know about God that are wrong. There are many things we don't know about God that should be known. The dimension of breakthrough you desire requires a certain kind of revelation. Light is the currency that we use to purchase spiritual realities. I used to think it's faith. But it's not faith faith is simply the credit card that you use but what really pays for it is light hmm. it, from the abundance of these things then you will know who god is and you can worship him in spirit and in truth there are things you can know about god that makes you unbendable immovable Nobody comes to sway you to and fro with every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive, the Bible says. It's important. Now, before I get to my sermon, this is, this, I can't believe that I've still not started preaching. Look at these people. Please start. Look at these people. Which dimension of your spiritual life has not been arranged accurately. There are people who are not even born again because you check the truths that they have. Salvation is not part of it. They never got born again. They were just born in a family. Just because you were not in a beer parlor does not mean you are safe. So they started like that. They started playing keyboard in church like this guy is playing now from keyboard he became um assistant music director are you seeing that now from assistant music director you became music director from music director you became deacon huh yes from deacon they opened a branch just when you were graduating and they call you pastor whoever you are now the truth is that whether or not you think you have grown according to god's order there is a pattern God is a God of patterns. He's not just a God of motion. He's a God of patterns. How you move and how you grow will determine whether you will become that which is in his heart. 
Now, this is the interesting thing about God. Even when you think you have been working with God, like we arrogantly say, for 15 years, the day he reveals himself to you, he will rearrange your life back. And sometimes when he, he rearranges your life by trying your works with fire, it's in the Bible. That means you can see a lot of achievements and the fire of his light will come. And all that will be left is your true state. That means God will say, you men say you are in level 5, you level 15, but really you are just at level 1. Now, you are at liberty to choose whether you will pay the price unashamedly to start properly with God or allow the ego that you have to just make you continue. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king, there is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king, there is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So men can call you MOG, men can call you deacon, men can call you this and that. But the truth is that if you are not growing and building according to pattern, I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but let me tell you, you are only wasting your time. When God comes, He never continues from where, what you were doing. Look at what happened to Abraham. When he met Abraham at all of the Chaldeans, this was his instruction. Abraham, come out of thy father's house and out of thy kindred. I hope you know at that time, Abraham was not a failure. At least he had some results. He had 200 plus servants. He had cattle. He had a number of things. And said, Abraham, don't think I'm coming to continue from there. I will start with you again. Let's start that journey. This is what brought some of you here. Some of you are already pastors, men of God, leaders. Some of you here were youth pastors before you got admission. You carried youth pastor mentality and just came and God said, no way, come and sit down. And if you are not careful, and please, every pastor here, this is an advice. Don't just see someone come because they said he came from so-so-so ministry or so-so-so parish. And in that parish, he was the music director. And you just say, okay, no problem. Come and sit down and play keyboard. And the guy comes with that celebrity mindset. Because in his church, spiritual growth is not necessary. In his church, just attendance and loyalty is what is, and, and sowing of seeds here and there. But now, this requirement requires you to sit down. Many celebrities get born again. I mean, secular celebrities now. They get born again and come to church. And then we just transfer their fame of the world and just add anointing on it. Not God. You are joking. Not God. Mm -mm. Not God. Not the God of the heavens. When you come, everybody starts from class one. Even Jesus, when he came, the father didn't even pity Jesus to say, okay, you are Jesus. I mean, this is me. He started right from scratch. At age 12, I imagine what was in the mind of Jesus when he was reading himself. Thou shalt love the Lord your God. And the rabbis were saying, I hope you are learning it. And he was just watching. The force that holds what he's reading. And not even Jesus was promoted like that. He had to wait. At age 12, he was learning. What do you think you are to just jump the steps? Favor does not jump steps. So, you hear that? Because our idea of shortcut must be balanced. Favor is shortcut, yes. But it is not shortcut to alienate you from information that you hear. Favor is a system that was designed to help you because men do not start life in an ideal way. Please listen. If I was teaching our precious school of ministry students the graph of life yesterday, the good old graph of life, 
if you are not part of school of ministry join even if it's just because of that if you don't change after that teaching i don't know what will change you in this life again the graph of life are we together if i get born again 40 years how many of you know that i am blessed but that's a disadvantage with respect to earthly time we don't have forever on earth now i got born again 40 years and someone got born again at age three who has more advantage than the other and don't say we are all equal you are not equal this guy has time time at age three born again at age four filled with the holy ghost at age five be mentored by a visionary father when that child becomes 12 he is now you of 70 at age 12 now listen let me show you listen listen don't just laugh let me show you the relevance of things like mercy favor these things are not just random things god looked at the way man works on earth and said if i don't add these other things man will never become the fullness of god's grace so here and there he interjects your work with life with these acts of his benevolence to help you this is where things like favor are important if you don't have favor in life you you will succeed the problem is you will only succeed if your life is ideal nobody's life is ideal including jesus they hid jesus because somebody wanted to kill him until herod died and he said okay now you can go there were things he would have been doing within that time mephibosheth because a midwife I, 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 am i alone in this place this night mephibosheth was a sincere person the midwife that held him was careless and because of her carelessness that guy fell down and broke his leg now sorry would not solve that problem because there are things he will never be able to do so how does god help this man's destiny by allowing him to live life the way it should be no so god introduces things like mercy thou shall arise and have mercy and looks at him god and he knows he looks at the way man should go and looks at the way man goes this guy was called to be a prophet to the nations this is his destiny are we together now according to god's predeterminate counsel the destiny of this gentleman like jeremiah is to be a prophet to the nations but it so happened that the womb that will give birth to him married an unbeliever now listen to this i hope you know this is not his fault it's just that the woman that should marry him because she didn't have enlightenment or she was deceived or misled now god married to a non-christian you, you you get what i'm saying now this guy according to the blueprint of his life he should have finished his assignment at 70 if he starts his journey at one but because of what he has to fight an extra battle that was not in the original plan is now here and that battle is the battle of grafting him out of this family first and listen to me sometimes this gentleman has no legitimate ground to leave the house until he gets to university so his destiny will have to wait till what what age do you get in mercy 17. this guy has to wait for 17 years are you getting the point now because according to god's blueprint that is the safest way for him to live if he lives in a way that they, they can kill him and God, for the sake of his destiny, will not allow him that. Now, while he's waiting for that 17 years, his brain is not closed. He's learning a lot of things he must undo. Because you cannot be in my house and not serve my God. So while he's bowing down and doing all of these things, heaven is bleeding. Because according to the blueprint, by age five, this guy should already be seeing visions. But now, the, and Satan, when he peeps there, Satan will make sure that the clerics isolate this guy and further indoctrinate him to complicate destiny. 
I show you why it's dangerous. It's not enough to be saved. Where you are planted can determine how you grow. Please, parents, let me tell you something. And even those who have children now, don't sit down and say it does not matter where they hear truth. It matters. Sit down and waste your child's time hearing nonsense, wasting his time. At the end of it, you will find out that there is no sequential growth. Please listen. I'm telling you, I'm teaching something entirely different. This is my note. I've not even started. But if this is how the Holy Ghost wants it this night, I think it, this, is, this is a deep and mature teaching. I'm, I'm correcting the reason why the Christian experience of many believers is just, is just a buffet of frustrations. I agree that an area or two of your life may be trusting, be needing the hand of God. But when every area fails, something is wrong. This one is no longer the law of process. Apostle, nothing is working in my life. I've been a Christian from 2001. I tell you where the problem is. I tell you. And the problem is not only an attack. An attack looks like the obvious reason. But I'm telling you now, there is no prophet, no pastor, no apostle that will just pray over the issue of attack alone and then your life changes. No. You want holistic growth? We must do the diagnosis tonight to know what is wrong. Back to my story. This gentleman is loitering somewhere very far from God and far from destiny. Are we together? Now he gets to the university after 17 years. 17 years has been wasted. When he gets there now, the devil will try to do all kinds of things. For instance, the devil can ensure that his first CGPA is 1.2. 1. 1 point what? Who will listen to God under that kind of condition? The pressure from life will make him say, do you know what? Let me find a fellowship where in 30 minutes they finished. Now, it doesn't mean, please, I hope you understand that I'm not being sarcastic to any... The fire on this guy's destiny is being quenched because you, you call it circumstances, but these are intentional orchestrations. And then this gentleman one day, that's why inviting people to the house of God, if you are sure of the quality of what you are receiving, then it is evil to not invite people. This is not the issue of evangelism. This is you being an extension of God's mercy. Because the person you will be inviting, you think you are just inviting, you don't know you are acting prophecy. Imagine that this guy now is in Zaria in this situation. Imagine what heaven will do to you as the person who holds his hand to insist he comes to Koinonia. You thought you just invited a man, but you literally shifted a destiny. Literally. Because of one encounter. Are you with me this night now? It's very important. Some of you are now seeing. Now, do you know that heaven will rejoice when this gentleman comes? You have invited five, six people, but all of them don't have the same destiny. This guy ordained to be a prophet to the nations. Did you really invite one person? How many people did you invite? He will give you flimsy excuse excuses i have not eaten and the holy ghost will say feed him and you are like holy spirit what is all this one i don't have transport and you bring him now imagine that you bring him for koinonia and then i'm not ready working for others the moment you enter except your feet does something must happen and reduce you back to look like your parents You can choose to believe what i'm saying no problem i don't know who prayed for you before you arrived but let me tell you sincerely if you know that there was no salvation in your past please hear what i'm saying seriously and pay attention to it altars are wicked they are like time nothing can fight them they will move slowly unperturbed by your pride until they catch up with you hallelujah i heard of a man of god that bought truck this dangote truck 
they kept advising him to diversify and that guy carried all his money i don't know how much that truck is but it's so expensive the moment the person bought that truck I, I, he was coming along i think kogi or so the road that was how that thing just capsized it burnt in a way burnt everything inside and burnt everything about that man and the guy sat down and was almost killing himself who taught you what you know spiritually forget about the one koinonia taught you what is it resting upon because some of you this is why you are not experiencing the outstretched arm of god now i don't mean i don't mean i love the body of christ but i have to tell you the truth there are men of god and there are churches that are wonderful but they are not healthy for a foundation for your spiritual growth no the context of what is taught is pungent and dangerous for your spiritual growth salt is good but if you fetch one mudu of rice to cook and you fetch one mudu of salt to cook is that a blessing no. there are truths that are like salt they are sprinkled and is enough by the time you carry that truth the same size of rice and combine everything you will deal and kill somebody there are people the sermons they had is why they never saw the necessity of prayer in their spiritual work are we together they came from a highly intellectual family and you see people just laugh and say demons the only demon you have is a demon in your brain and your mind and the devil says wow this is wonderful for the child who comes from the church the house of an evangelist and a prayer warrior that is a correct sermon but for you who is coming from a foundation where they wrote your name when they gave birth to you while you were a baby your head was inside water and they were speaking nonsense to your destiny and you believe you would just casually say in jesus name i'm born again no sir the same way you don't say casually money come and it comes there are systems and there are principles the same way too if you are not careful you can be born again in a ministry that all they see is demons did you hear what i said everything is demons and then there is serious trouble because you will never have the enlightened mind that will keep you in victory your entire life will be full of warfare and fear because that is the context of the education that you received so when it's time to be responsible and understand the systems of the kingdom you will not so all you will keep doing in your life is to pray what knowledge should bring to you you are trying to get it through prayer are we together now when you should learn when you hear sermons like sermons on destiny help us sermons on excellence the law of honor you just ignore it and say all i know is that there is a witch in this family you will find out that even when the person you have been calling a witch dies you will celebrate and nothing will change because the issue of which was already settled but the remaining issues in fact the weightier matters that required spiritual enlightenment the person who mentored you did not call you to see the necessity it's a blessing to have a good pastor over you it's a blessing to have a man of god that can draw the boundaries that are relevant to your growth and construct you like a building i will give you pastors after my heart this is a mistake we're making in ministry now we just ordain people anyhow the moment someone looks handsome charismatic can dress well you just say come you are you are pastor this and that you arrogantly stand on stage and confuse people at the end of it the people don't know what they believe again it's nine o'clock let's pray we can't hear this kind of thing and just round up we are going to pray seriously first and foremost hold the hands of someone and blast in tongues first to prepare your spirit find a neighbor and pray seriously
Shela bakata barus kabaranda kata. Embra kateka leka to baruka sada balakata fresh. Raso delende kaparusha da karyanda kada bradegesh. Shala maranda kate prakate leka tosh. Embra kata baraka to kate barata. Prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is for any man who intends to be changed, to be lifted, and to become great in life and destiny. Shalabaranda kaprakato sepeles. Pray, pray, pray. Shele parakato jambra kata embra kete kete baruto soto preke develop. My Christian experience must be fruitful. I must bear fruit. I must bear fruit. I must bear fruit in my life. Barakato sabrande gade balash, embreketo kashada barata segete balakata brande gade balash, embreketo sabros kela kapo shata brande gade. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are going to pray this night for your destiny. You are going to call it by name and declare that in this season, my destiny open, 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 open up. He said, Lo, I come. Please pray, please pray. Destiny, in the name of Jesus, be open. Shekete kaparaka to pariketa, embrata leka paroda shalaka tabariata. My assignment, my destiny, open up. In the name of Jesus, no wasting time, no rambling around. Open up in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Outside, are you praying? Make sure you are praying from the depth of your heart. Shabarakata. Embra kato sheke te leke te ke te ke te ke te. Embra kato soto pakura kata paria. Open up, open up, open up. In the name of Jesus, open up. Open up, lekata barata shote reketaba. Open up, in the name of Jesus. Open up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. 
Please listen to me. You are going to pray. And you are going to cry to God. And say, Lord, every, every disarrangement of truth in my life that has been responsible for my stunted growth, I pray by the Spirit of God, rearrange my life. Rearrange my destiny. What I have believed wrongly, correct it, oh God. I am open, I'm not a rebel. Let your emphasis be my emphasis. Pray. More than what a man of God said. Arrange my life sequentially. Arrange my destiny sequentially. Who am I to meet in this season? Who must enter my life in this season? Based on your arrangement. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Please don't think you are, you are wasting your time. You are praying seriously. Now, I say this with all humility. Listen. Please listen. Imagine if till now I was still trying to hear God concerning koinonia. Are you seeing now? Imagine there are people according to the blueprint of your assignment you are not supposed to be looking for money now you are supposed to have it already because the next phase of your life is dependent on that supply there are people right now at according to god's blueprint the level of prophetic you should be operating in it is required for the kind of assignment but because you are still here god cannot move with you hear me hear me there are ladies according to god's blueprint you should be ready for marriage now based on the sequence of your destiny but it's right now you are getting serious with your life hear me hear me there are some of you according to the sequence of destiny it's you and your elder brother that should be standing as pillars but the devil killed your brother from bed that means you are carrying the burden of two people you need your grace plus the grace that will come on you else so when you pray one hour god will say add it to because you were supposed to pray only an hour because there's someone else holding it with you but he's alive and he's drinking around and god's agenda must move forward so you must build stamina to be able to carry it listen listen to me please listen i'm speaking by the spirit don't think i'm just talking anyhow listen to me please listen there are families according to the design of god you are supposed to be three men but the devil made sure no man come to that family it was later on you showed up sometimes as the last born and now you have to stand in a position of three men as one man there are families it's supposed to be you and your father and your pastor but now your father did not serve the lord or your father has died god will not change his purposes his plans can change but his purposes remain eternal listen listen there are families according to god's design you should never even try to say okay i'm looking for two or three jobs because according to that design your father should have been responsible to help you with an inheritance but now the devil hijacked that destiny and the way you are right now 
if you fail there is no more hope for your family because everyone that came to help the devil took them out of the way you know it i like you to pray and say lord i will not fail you and i will not fail destiny is someone praying lord i will not fail you i will not fail destiny if it depends on me then i will not fail if it depends on me if it depends on me to change the course of my family if it depends on me to enthrone jesus over my family if it depends on me i will not fail someone pray pray with the picture of your loved ones in your mind pray with the picture of your children on your mind pray with the picture of your destiny on your mind if it depends on me i will not fail it may take time but i will not fail Hallelujah. I wish you people knew that song. Atmosphere, shift now. Huh? You may not know it. I just, I just had that song in my spirit. I will not fail if it depends on me. I think about my life with all humility. And I think about the destinies that would have gone down even if I were born again and I refused to answer the call. Listen, the next prayer point, we are praying. Listen, Spirit of the living God, if I am found anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Bring me back to the place of destiny. Lift your voice and pray. If I found myself anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Please pray, pray, pray. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny geographically. Align me to destiny relationally. Align me to destiny financially. Allow me to align me to destiny spiritually. Align me to destiny, oh God. Pray that prayer and watch your life change. Align me to destiny. Let me stop rambling around. Bring me to the place, the path of destiny. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. It was never my intention, never my intention to be in Zaria. It would have been the last place for me to think of being at this time but you see there's something about destiny there are people when the devil wants to waste their time they will get american visa and travel and roam around america just because you are making some money does not mean you are in destiny look at how god brought some of you here god carried you from different places is destiny Forget about the story that brought you. Align me to destiny. Let me not find... Listen, let me tell you this. There are people, when the devil wants to destroy their destiny... They will receive certain kinds of promotions 
you will think uh, is promotion is not wrong in itself but they will receive a promotion and become a ceo and that ceo will not allow them do and be certain things life is more than money oh. life is more than fame are we together next prayer point lord where am i supposed to have been in destiny that i am not i pray by the spirit in this season take me there take me there i should not be at this level in ministry financially maritally spiritually pray by your spirit bring acceleration to my life there is no more time to waste the voice of my generation is crying speedy manifestation oh god of all that pertains to my destiny in this season hallelujah hallelujah now listen to me the next prayer point i will have to teach you a little to understand covenants are systems of advantage please listen a covenant is more than an agreement it's a system that provides an advantage in life listen to me carefully you reign in life based on the privilege of the advantage that you have are we together now yes advantage every time you see anything that spells an advantage in the bible you must study it everybody rose based on an advantage joshua stood before jericho helpless like any leader would be except that he was standing on an advantage it was that advantage that brought the captain of the lord's army he said i am here daniel would have died in babylon except for the advantage he was standing on and based on that advantage gabriel came and said i am come to give you understanding and he understood the times that was allocated for the liberation abraham was standing on a covenant and so he saw in a vision that god's people would be in captivity for 400 years please listen to me this thing i'm teaching you is a deep teaching your destiny will remain on the ground until there is a system of advantage i repeat the knowledge of god is not based on covenant your spiritual growth but kingdom advancement and the advancement of your life and destiny is based on systems of advantage are we together and there are many systems of advantage i hope that in the coming weeks just brace up for the teachings that will come in the coming weeks because there are things that we need to learn an advantage There are systems of advantage. Listen to what Haman, when Haman went to his family, his brethren, and Haman told them, he said, look at what Esther did to me. They put their hands on their head. They said, Haman, you are finished. This woman is a Jew. She looked at him and said, whose son are you? Not who trained you. Not what weapons do you have. I need to know what advantage you are carrying to stand before Goliath. When he stood before Goliath, Goliath said, Am I a dog? Am I a dog that you stand before me and come with a sling? Are you trying to catch a goat? And David said, You come to me with your spheres and your bows, but I come to you, listen, in a name. Ah, 
I wish we could deal with this. Because you see, a name in the spirit is a revelation of a dimension of God. God's dimensions are stored in his names. I came with a name. Are we together now? And foolish Goliath, instead of him to ask, are you a Jew? He kept quiet. What do you think made Jericho to close their gate? They said, who are the guys coming to attack us? The moment they said they were Jews, they close the gate. Close it quickly. We know these guys. There is a track record. There is a strange God that works with them. Ah! There are men who there are things they are standing on. And based on those systems of advantage, I tell you, they can fail in other things, not finances. No. They can make the most stupid financial decisions. Yet what they stand upon will bail them out. Have you seen families like that? All their children must be leaders. Must be leaders. It doesn't matter what happens. Whether it's a village school or whatever. The girl must be head girl. The boy must be head boy. In a class of many people. Eventually they will be leaders. When you say the jf kennedy family what comes to your mind there are families that are a dynasty it's not just business they were passing they were platforms whether with fraternity with satan or fraternity with god but there was a system of advantage i will never forget i've always been a very brilliant person i remember i was in js one this issue changed my life. I had always been the best student, effortlessly the best. In fact, I didn't know that people used to read during exams. Nobody ever asked me to go and read. If you were in my class, just give up in terms of position. You are wasting your time. It's not only that I will take first, the gap I will give you will make you not to come near me again. And something happened. When I was in secondary school, the first time I was the best student. The second term, I think I was the best student or so. But the third term, the guy that took third before, the parents moved to living faith. Listen, oh. They moved to living faith. It didn't reach three months. They did anointing service for that boy. Straight when he came and wrote exams. When that, now, this is not about first or second. I'm just using it to explain something. When the results came out and I looked at my results, I looked at the guy. It, it wasn't, you know, I didn't know what I knew now. You can imagine a small boy. I said, no, something is wrong. Something has to be wrong. Because my best performance was this point. Something has to be wrong. That guy was, his average was just with like five marks. I said, no, there has to be a recalculation. Something is wrong. And then I met him. I said, in the spirit of sportsmanship, congratulations. And he laughed. He told me that they did anointing service for them in living faith. I said, what is living faith? It was later when I understood. I said, ah! I was standing on my brain. He was standing on an altar. Listen, sir, let me do this. Come. Tell us your testimony. Now, everybody stand and listen to this testimony. Go ahead. Um, I am a pastor. I was in Mubi before we got transferred to Abuja. Because of the distance and the financial constraint, we decided that my wife would not return back to school. So during uh, the last uh, her second semester exam, she didn't go and then... Uh, we attended Koinonia, uh, the miracle service uh, last month, and then we the resolved that she should go back to school. When she returned to school, they uploaded their results. Lo and behold, she had results. And all of the results were A. I mean B. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, you, you, I, I called him out so that he would talk. This is a pastor. She didn't do second semester. Or, what, what second semester? Semester because of listen because of financial constraint which is justifiable 
they now came down he relocated and then when all of that happened he now planned because he had been had been in touch so it's not something that we're just talking i've been in touch this is not a license for laziness no it's just showing you that there are possibilities that's why i said the prayer i want you to pray now if i don't teach this you will not understand it woe betides a man who stands alone listen bishop oyedeko listen one man of god in the south south he was about to start ministry and then he went to bishop oyedeko for prayer and advice as you know they were releasing him and bishop oyedeko spoke to him in yoruba i wish i'm a yoruba person he said never fight alone that's my advice for you never fight alone i show you why many people continue to fall victims in life so the plan was that they will go back and then let the wife now register now that god has helped them things have started changing i'm explaining the story for you they now went and said okay let's see how far as they printed results second semester result a and b parallel that's what came out as the wife's result this man is a pastor he has a congregation he's a spiritual father to many he will not come and mess up his integrity and he said, this is a father with a wife and children listen it is not to endorse laziness but it's to let you know that this kingdom is a compendium of possibilities limited only by your spiritual understanding god bless you son we're going to round up but let's we're going to pray this prayer systems of advantage abraham was an idol worshiper from a place called or of the chaldeans chaldeans were were idol worshipers they were necromancers when god called him out it still was not enough god met him and said i need to enter a covenant with you if i just call you and i say let's go to the promised land you will still die i have to provide a platform that becomes the basis of this new order are we together many of you do not know that the secret to the future you've heard me say it is in the past before you move forward in life you have to go backwards please hear what i'm saying all these names that we have given this phenomena in life there whether you call it failure at the edge of breakthrough whether you call it spirit husband whether you call it spirit wife whether you call it rise and fall all those are invented names that's to tell you many people are having the same experience that's why they could receive it and understand the teaching that i did the mystery of deliverance part one to four that message has delivered people until we stand before god to see how many people were delivered when truths are taught with imbalance it can destroy listen there are things that god does for the sake of the fathers there are things that god does for your own sake did you hear what i said there are some of you now you are in certain levels of blessings and favor and in the name of honesty you have nothing to do with it maybe your mother used to cook for pastors listen no before you were born your mother just said me you i'm not a woman of god but all i keep doing is if there is any pastor i will make sure i cook for them one day she cooked for a man who was not a pastor she cooked for a system 
and he swore a blessing and said may your children be great now listen that looks like a pronouncement it's more than a pronouncement and now you showed up and when satan is supposed to destroy you between you and the destruction the pronouncement comes in between you my covenant will i not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my mouth the same way noah looked at africa and cursed africa and said a servant of servants shall you be as born again as we are that curse is still in place today now people are following from america and the rest and i don't mean to insult you but you see the level of spiritual depravity that is in america the decadence right that when you put sex on phone male of or on a form male or female it's not only male or female that is there now male female and then some others yet in the midst of it you expect god to be angry and stand up and say america your glory has been withdrawn <laughs> every time he wants to do that someone's prayer stands every time the coming of jesus was about to be delayed the prayer of anna the prophetess stood in the realm of the spirit maranatha come 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 i told you about my life that my mother prayed a prayer and had an agreement with god she told the lord she said lord my own father was a pastor he died serving you he said please use either my brother her younger brother now or any of my sons to continue let it not be that this spiritual heritage is lost she thought it was just a casual prayer and then i showed up innocently but something was a system of advantage there are some of you today you don't have any past you don't have any bad record it's not because you are a nice person you are one of the most loose and careless person but simply because there was an ordinance upon your life that prevented all sorts of evil from happening to your life because of the destiny attached to you let me tell you this you have to know the systems of advantage that god provided are we together the yoruba people were given a grace upon their minds it's a grace god gave that territory a grace now what i'm teaching you is truth from god's word that the yoruba people as a nation were given many graces among them was the grace for the prophetic the eyes that see not necessarily hearing but the power of sight which was an extension of intellect is a grace please listen to me let me show you mysteries Igbo people were given the grace of courage and creativity it's a grace that was given that you can drop an Igbo territorially is a grace any poor Igbo man you see is a lazy man because they already have an advantage listen the north and that includes the middle belt the grace is the grace of leadership and governance it's a grace this is what the northerners take advantage of they study these things they don't just come out for election they know that we are standing on an advantage these are ordinances my brothers and my sisters in mount zion the side of the north the city of the great king are we together now leadership so many times when god wants you to be a spiritual leader listen carefully no matter where you are in your voyage you must touch the knot no matter who you are listen carefully this is where bishop oedeko started from 
this no matter who he will rout you because you must drink of that grace how do i explain this thing are we together when you say evil people like money they don't like money it is an advantage that has carved out a niche for them governance there are few men of god who now lead the body of christ who do not have an affiliation with something that brought them to the north notice that god when god wants to announce you in nigeria you must touch lagos if your feet does not touch abel kuta and lagos you cannot be global from this country whether as a secular artist i think we'll just end for today it is those who have the eyes that see that know Many of you don't know why God carried you and brought you to Zaria. It's not just because of Koinonia. It is because these are the systems of God. He will bring you and you make contact with the possibility that he planted within that territory. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, the, the systems of advantage that you have provided for me, I walk into it. I walk into it there is a heritage that we have a territorial heritage an intellectual heritage a spiritual heritage Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen. We're rounding up. I want you to get tonight's teaching. Please. I'd like you to give tonight's teaching to anybody you find. And tell him, please. Please. Listen. In fact, you can tell him it's a birthday gift from apostle to you. Take. Listen. This is not the kind of teaching that you hear tonight and say wow wonderful <clears throat> this is the kind of teaching you will sleep and wake up with there are many things i have said that you did not hear but i guarantee you that if you understand what i taught this night 
there is no limit to your life you can take advantage of everything around you every territory has an advantage you can tap into the advantage that comes with it your church has an advantage your soil has an advantage your family has an advantage i know your father was a herbalist and a priest but that is the corrupted destiny of a prophet there is still an advantage that can be seen and can be activated hallelujah this is how we grow in the kingdom we don't just grow by will we don't just grow by luck listen let me tell you this this night i just chose to show you these are the things that work in the lives of extraordinary people it's not just that things are working anyhow no you see all this anointing the power of god breaking out anyhow it's not there are systems of advantage your life must learn it you must know it and you must know how to engage it every jew in israel knows he cannot fail born again or not meet any jew put any jew to be a board member of your company and you watch what starts happening no matter how foolish the decisions are the wealthiest people in america today are jews the greatest brands in the world today they are jews there is a history to the things we see there is a reason why boko haram thrives in the north they go outside the north they will fail north is the seat of governors there is an advantage in the territory they know this by divination The East is always a place associated with wisdom. The Magi, wise men came from the East. It's true. The wickedness came from the seat of governance. Herod wanting to kill Jesus. So it should not surprise you that terrorism springs from the North the seat of governance and strangely enough the place that also looks like the seat of governance is also the place where revival rises hmm. that is the reason why you see the moves of god ministries like koinonia all these things are not they are not guessings they are pieces of a divine puzzle <laughs> are we together many of you are looking at me dumbfounded let's round up by one last prayer father in the name of your son jesus christ reveal to me every advantage that makes for my excelling in life from scripture from the ministry that i am under the grace from christ himself the chiefest of all advantages reveal to me let me know what i stand upon and the possibilities that are associated with that covenant please pray
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know why the Holy Spirit decided to move this way? To share this? These are not things I share in a general meeting like this. These are truths that you share when you are talking to leaders. I don't know why God decided to allow this thing. That's why I say, please get it and listen to it. You will think you understood what I said. No. Your spirit man only appreciated what I said. You will need to settle down. Because you will hear something from that message that will control your results and open you up to the next season. This is how I live my life. I never stand anywhere in ignorance of the advantage. This world is too wicked. You don't guess your advantage on the battlefront. It's too risky. Tomorrow I'm on my way to Lagos again. I came back from Kogi State yesterday. There is an advantage I stand upon that gives me security over death. My life is a very risky life. If you live this kind of life and this kind of schedule and all you say is I know God will protect us, one day you will land in trouble. I am a giver as a person. It's both an office, a hobby, a desire and a responsibility. And I know that the way I give is not recommended for an average person. I'm telling you this. You give that way, you will have problems with your wife, your husband, your children. That means there must be an advantage. This is more than financial intelligence. There must be a system provided that can allow for that dimension of God to continue unhindered. My work should do. If you do what I do for two weeks, you will have a health challenge. Sincerely, I'm telling you this. I've been out of this town since Saturday. Only returned yesterday. Had to rush, come for school of ministry. And all today, I've been busy doing a lot of things. I'm here now this night. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to be counseling for over the next maybe two, three hours. Heading back home. Barely have time to sleep. Tomorrow, I'm heading to Lagos straight into the morning session of a meeting and yet Tuesday is my birthday you live like that something will happen to you if I've not collapsed it's not just because I'm wise there is something you must stand on the Lord is speaking to someone here and he's saying I will visit you again of course, everyone can receive, but this is a particular revelation. God is saying, I am coming to you again. The way I came before, I am coming again. I am coming again. It will be in this month, this month of June. He will come to you again with a very strange encounter. And you will receive something from that encounter that will change your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. So we said that number four, that the secret place is a place where we find rest and comfort. Rest and comfort. And then number five, we said the secret place is a place of revival and restoration revival revival of fire revival of love revival of passion revival of grace revival of mantles revival of new dimensions in the spirit and then i'll give you the last one and then we'll go this is not the topic for today i just want to make sure we complete the note that the secret place is the place of spiritual empowerment. We gain power not by strolling on the seat. It is in the secret place that we find true spiritual power. In a secret place, you get the anointing for your personal life. And in the secret place, you get the anointing to accomplish God's agenda for a season. 
you can be anointed as a believer but not anointed to be relevant for a season listen very carefully it is possible that i'm anointed if you come to me i can pray for you but as far as god's agenda within a territory is concerned it's possible that you are not relevant there is a special anointing that one is not the anointing for a believer that one is not even the anointing for your call and office it is the anointing that makes a man relevant within a season that's why you see many anointed people become voiceless after certain seasons they are still anointed they still love god but the anointing to play a key role in god's program is not there so although they are anointed you still get blessed but it's very clear that the lampstand is not on them within that season the lord put a very serious topic in my heart tonight that i want to share tonight's topic is going to challenge you is going to inspire you and is going to provoke you pray in the spirit for one minute just do what I'm asking you to do. Pray in the spirit. Just pray in the spirit for one minute. Just be sensitive to the instructions. You're allowing your spirit to contact something while you pray. Don't stop, keep praying. God Jesus is the Elyon of Israel. Elyon, God most high. Jesus Christ is the Elyon of Israel. Elyon, God most high. Please be seated if you can. Hallelujah. sit down get something to write if you can unless understand what the Lord wants to help us I'm not sure we'll be able to complete it tonight contending for kingdom relevance part one mm. contending for kingdom relevance part one Contending for kingdom relevance, part one. This is a very powerful teaching that seeks to show you how you can become a voice. You can represent the voice of God to a generation and you can rise to a position of kingdom influence. Remember, we're still in a season where God has declared that he is lifting men. 
Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. Please give it to us. Salabakushi atakatuski abalaji. No sados keleshi andas kabaru hasikatia. Salabarus kelebratiki adabalaba. Salabaruki adabalaba. Just sit where you are. Sheke te kota salabrati ke te keli adaba. Shere ke tu ka salabrati ke tu baladaba. Shele baratu se de keli adaba la daba la daba. Shaka tu ste pratish ke la prendi ke diba. Reke tu ka sada baladaba ko te adaba. Sheke te baratu se ke te bali adaba. Something is lifting from your life. Sheka paruta si adaba. Lifting from your life. Sheba kotosi. Lifting from your life, I change that situation now. I change that situation now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I change that situation now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I change that situation now. For David, please give us Amplified. It says, for David, after he had served God's will and purpose and counsel, but he served it in his own generation. He said, fell asleep and was buried. But he said, David served God in his generation it's not enough to serve God it's enough to serve God within the context of a generation are we together now there are mandates that are left for generations every generation has a spiritual curriculum about God and his purposes that God intends for them to accomplish and hear me your relevance within a generation is predicated upon your understanding your generation and knowing the corporate mandate that God has put upon that generation you can live within a generation and serve God but serve God in a way and manner that does not influence a generation it's not enough to serve God you must serve God in a way and a manner that brings the purposes of God to a generation and this is what I want to teach you tonight he said David served God's will and purpose and counsel in his own generation not another generation everyone that the bible records that was used by god was used within the context of a generation listen very carefully if you miss relevance within your generation then you have missed relevance forever are we together i think i was teaching in lagos during the younger gilded program and i gave them an illustration no matter how anointed I am, anybody above 55 years is not within the scope of my generation. No matter how I love them, they will be blessed from my life, but they will quickly go to Papa Oyedeko and Papa Deboye because those are the voices of that generation. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? It's not enough to seek relevance. You must seek relevance within the context of a generation. Your voice does not speak to every generation. There is a generation where your relevance is allocated to. God sends men not just to places. He sends men to a generation. And if you cannot identify your generation of impact and influence, then you will live a very useless life. And David after he served the will of God there are some things that are allowed in other generations that are not allowed in others 
Are we together? Every time God was about to move within the scope of a generation, he would find a man or he would find men and then begin to introduce them to the dynamics of relevance and greatness. Contending for kingdom relevance. There are things that we need to know if we are to rise to a point of kingdom influence and relevance and have taught us again and again in this place that kingdom relevance is very important to have kingdom influence and it is also very important to be able to speak the purposes of God when you are unable to represent the purposes of God within a generation then you may not be able to to influence that generation Judges chapter 6 please very quickly we are going to read from verse 11 Judges chapter 6 this was an encounter that the Lord had with a young man called Gideon verse 11 and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which is in Ophrah and pertained to Joash and all of that and his son Gideon Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites remember they were being threatened by the Midianites and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said the Lord is with thee O mighty man of failure and Gideon answered and said unto him O my Lord if the Lord be with us why then is this befallen us and where be all his miracles which our father told of saying this the Lord not do this and that and that for him and the Lord looked upon him and said go in this thy might and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites have I not sent thee it didn't look to Gideon like he was sent but God said have I not sent thee with a message and a mandate to a people next verse 15 and he said unto him listen listen carefully he said oh my lord wherewith shall i save where not the whole world israel you have sent me with a message but that message is to a people and a context he said behold this is my limitation my family is poor in Manasseh and I am aside from the fact that the family is poor I am the least in my father's house look at the excuse he's giving God is telling him I am lifting you and then he says I cannot do the assignment because of two things one poverty there is a relationship between poverty and lack of influence and lack of relevance number two lack of greatness i am small my family is small and yet even in that family i am the least in my father's house 16. hallelujah hallelujah and the lord said unto him surely I will be with thee and because of my presence with thee thou shall smite the Midianites as one man follow me very carefully tonight <laughs> Jesus Psalm 24 and verse 6 he said this 
is the generation not this is the person listen carefully this is the generation that has a mandate as a generation to seek God but to seek God in the similitude of Jacob listen very carefully he's saying the word oh Jacob there is oh God of Jacob he said there is a generation mandated by God to seek God in the similitude of Jacob are we together now when God tells you to search for him he looks for human references that are reflections of that expectation are we together when God wants to teach believers to love he will lift up John and tell them to study his life when God wants to teach people how to walk in the blessing he lifts up Abraham and tells them to study his life in James chapter 5 when God is teaching people how to pray strategic prayer he lifts up a prophet called Elijah and says study him when God wants to teach people on faith he lifts up Peter when God wants to teach men on revelation he lifts up Paul the apostle are we together now so God is very figurative in his expression for you to understand this scripture you have to go back to Genesis 28 and Genesis 32 and study how Jacob sought God because he said the mandate that was on one man Jacob is a mandate that one day will come upon a generation that a generation will be mandated to seek the face of God in the similitude of Jacob are we together God appears to Jacob in chapter 28 and until that time listen carefully there was no God of Jacob when God revealed himself he said I am the God of Abraham there was a way I taught Abraham to seek me there were possibilities about me that no one had known but my encounter with Abraham introduced the world of men to these possibilities the God of Abraham then Isaac the son used the God of Abraham to create the God of Isaac the God of Abraham was a springboard the mysteries of God that his father knew and out of his own dealings with God God created a name called the God of Isaac by the time we get to Psalms here Jacob had done his own too and God names himself by a man's experience with him Jacob's encounter is so powerful that God's covenant people were not named after Abraham they were not named after Isaac they are not called the Abrahamites they are not called the Isaacites they are called the Israelites not even the Jacobites so powerful was this encounter that God said the generation that wants to know me must seek me in the similitude of Jacob You want to influence a generation? Hmm. God is lifting her, Dr. Alima. I'm seeing her climb a ladder. The Spirit of God is lifting her to a higher level of influence. That's what, that's what I'm seeing in the Spirit. You want to be relevant to a generation. If you love God, and you desire that through your life his purposes be established then you must contend for kingdom influence i've taught you again and again in this place that kingdom advance is a product of two things one is global evangelization number two influence the purposes of the kingdom must be established in the hearts of men through evangelism and then through influence must be established across every strata of human activities are we together and so you must know how to birth the purposes of god 
and I want you to follow me as I share with you there are certain things in the spirit that when you touch you will never be irrelevant please listen to me but most of what it takes to be relevant believers are not seeking it we are seeking nonsense all around yet we are looking for kingdom relevance the things that make for relevance in this kingdom are spiritual in context first in that order we are searching for mundane and carnal things that do not have the fortitude to give men a voice in a generation Koinonia, a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. Thank you. Just thank Him for life. Thank Him for grace it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed it is of the Lord's mercy that we have the eyes to see the things that he has shown us by grace thank you thank you for deliverance thank you for healings thank you for safety thank you for protection thank you for preservation don't be tired let the list go on and on and tell him thank you. Lord, that I am here in the midst of your people ready to receive, I say thank you. Thank him for your ministry. Thank him for the influence that he has granted you. Thank him for giving you his voice, his spirit, his wisdom, his anointing. Lord, I'm not here to complain about my many struggles, but by your spirit and your grace, I'm confident you saw them, but I'm here to say I love you. Without your word, without your spirit, nothing can be made out of our lives. We stand before your people, connecting with all who are part of this family around the world. We declare that you alone are faithful, you alone are God. No man can do these things except God be with him. And Lord, we just want to take the time to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. A thousand tongues will not be enough to say thank you. We are not in ministry if lives are not being changed. We are not in ministry if your power is hindered through our lives and from our lives. We are not in ministry if your word is not coming in season. We are not in ministry if your voice is not heard in the midst of us. But Lord, we thank you. We're not in ministry if no one is around to hear what you are declaring to us. You have exalted us. You have honored us. You have blessed us. And we thank you. We thank you. Tonight, I ask that you bless us. Challenge us again. We have come to Bethel, the place of bread. 
we have come to the threshing floor we have come to the place of purification we have come to the place of impartation we have come to the place of hope we have come to the place of transformation we have come to the place of the oil and the wine we have come to the place where you can open our eyes and wash it with eyes out that we may see we have come to the place where the voice of the lord is not scarce tonight oh god we cry that in a new way you speak to us you challenge us set us on fire once again and oh god beyond the speakings of a man we pray that your voice will echo from the throne and cause us to hear in the name of jesus christ thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus you are my hiding place you always fill my heart with songs of deliverance Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say that I am strong in the strength. Of the Lord, we will trust in you. We will trust in you. Let the wind say. sing just one more song. Amen, amen, amen. Sing it as a prophecy over your life. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. To your will, to your word, to your power. Amen. says now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet take your eyes away from the temporary setbacks no money no ministry no influence all that is rubbish the Bible says they looked unto him that's the key he lifted the brazen serpent and he says to look take away your eyes for all those who looked at the serpent the one on the ground could not have an effect on them he said if it be thou bid me come and peter set his gaze 
but the winds were still boisterous and he turned his eyes you know that song turn your eyes upon Jesus who knows that song his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely deep in the light of his glory and grace. I'd like you to prophesy to yourself in one minute. No force is capable of hindering the purposes of God over my life. Shake away unbelief. Shake away limitations. I may not look like it, but the Spirit of God is doing something. You may not feel like a man of God, but the anointing is within your horizon. There's no plan of darkness that is able to thwart the purposes of God over your life. Can you prophesy to yourself? Go into the place of destiny by the anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost there is no power no force the gates of hell does not sustain the ability to stop me I decree and declare that I am rising by the Spirit Hallelujah This, this is already a message to someone because you see brothers and sisters this life has a way of taking away your gaze from Jesus some of you had to trek to come here and while you were trekking the devil told you where is the grace you claim you have for prosperity some of you had to fight all kinds of battles to be here but let me tell you if your life were ordinary the devil will not waste his time around you there was something the spirit of the Antichrist saw with the star and began to manipulate Herod to look for where Jesus is Satan has refused to let you go because there is something in your life and around your destiny that makes him uneasy and in the name of Jesus I declare to you again that no power it's already too late no power no power of hell will stop you you see for as long as it is night you will continue to weep but when light comes this light we are talking about the Bible says there were many lights Buddhism has some light occultism has some light they manipulate things but the bible says he made two great lights great lights the lights that rule in the day and the lights that rule in the night when the sun shines you wonder if there are stars again all of a sudden the brilliance that is the same way god does not bless you by just prophesying to you alone he blesses you by getting you filled with his light you become so full you turn back and can't find darkness again the bible says in john chapter 1 listen carefully and verse 5 it says the light shineth in darkness the light the word that you have that has been brought to you by the spirit is capable of dispelling any darkness so brothers and sisters let me encourage you you may look around your life and not find any traceable evidence that rewards your hunger and your passion for God and the devil will want to lie to you to say for how long will you continue seeking him without a sign let me tell you this do you know in the spirit five minutes to your breakthrough it will still not be like it but all of a sudden he said in a moment in a twinkling of an eye your life will just shift and change in a way that will bless you that's how God lifts people please I want you to be very intentional about your expectation God is not a fool 
he doesn't call the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain creator of the universe what can you do what can you do over your life before you sit down Psalm 45 Shabrando Zikatulia Hasarabale Psalm 45 The Lord just put it in my spirit to prophesy over your life Words are powerful Realities are created through words 45 verse 12 he says and the daughter of tyre shall be there with a gift he says even the rich among the people shall entreat your favor there is listen i taught you something where we are going to teach on something but it's just a grace that came on me now listen to me listen you see brothers and sisters everything in life that we know is bought with money is that true do you agree with me but do you know that money itself is a product that is bought with something come promise promise once a phone listen carefully and then I give him money this money can buy a phone do you agree what if it is money he wants what can I give him to buy money? The name of what you give that buys money is what the Bible calls true riches. True riches. It is true riches that can purchase unfaithful mammon and alongside with it buy every other thing. The peace, the joy, the influence. Are we together? There is something in this kingdom that buys every other thing. On earth, this looks like the highest, most valuable thing. When you possess this, you can make any noise and ramble and talk rubbish. But in the kingdom, there are realities that we possess. Listen carefully. And the Bible says with it, everything, whether this, Whatever it is you can possess is, is called the true riches. There are seven of this spiritual capital. One of them is called light. We buy things with light. The power, light is capital in the spirit. The anointing is capital in the spirit. Words are capital in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands and I speak over you that in this season I program a climate of spiritual reality above you and I declare may it begin to call strange levels of lifting in your life. May it begin to call strange levels of honor to your life. May it begin to call strange levels of speed in your life. We're going to sit down shortly let me pray for the grace for speed now listen be sensitive because the people the anointing will come on sometimes they can attempt to run physically so you hold them so they don't scatter everywhere right now i stretch my hands the grace that came upon elijah that caused him to overtake the chariot of ahas by this apostolic 
and prophetic grace I stand in the office of my God I shift you by speed enter a new dimension in the name of Jesus speed 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 I prophesied in one day let Zion be born I command speed speed in your finances speed in your spiritual life speed in every area of your life whatever level you have been in spiritually and you have refused to shift I stand by prophecy and I shift you to a new dimension new level of prophecy new level of revelation new level of encounters new levels of signs and wonders receive it in the name of Jesus We see your glory. You know that song? In this kingdom it is what is on you that controls what is around you are you hearing what I'm saying in this kingdom it is the spiritual climate above you I'm speaking by the spirit it is the spiritual climate above you that controls the realities that are captured in your life it takes more than desire it takes more than zeal again I'm speaking to you any climate over you that is drawing things in your life that are putting you in trouble any climate that is refusing you from rising you are a man of God with an anointing yet doors are not opening because there is a climate in the name of Jesus I command that climate to live your life now down shortly lift your hands I want to pray on your hands not you just your hands it was with the hand Moses held the rod he says and with these hands you will do signs and wonders I stretch my hands to your hands and by the spirit I make contact with your hands may these hands carry straight fire fire for signs fire for wonders you lay these hands and change the destinies of men you lay these hands and speak the purposes of the kingdom. Everything these hands come upon, I declare that it is anointed. It will be an instrument of signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down if you can. Just, just leave those under the anointing. Please sit down. Hallelujah. You see, if the power of God cannot come and change you, then you are wasting your time. Brothers and sisters, I am ministering to you what the Bible calls true riches. This is God's justice system. 
oh i didn't i was not so educated oh i was not this i didn't have wealthy parents but there is something that can come upon men and help them you are receiving the help of god god doesn't just help people by wishing he puts something upon your life i've taught you this what is on you is what controls what is around you not what you want not what men say they can talk nonsense from morning till night if you ever turn and see strange results in your life whether you know it or not there is something controlling it if a man ever looks at you and says i want to bless you nobody has the heart to do it on his own no sir if as a man of god you ever call for a solemn assembly and people come there is something on you it's not about stories and nonsense what is upon you is what controls what is around you i repeat what is upon you if you desire something around you and it's not there don't look for it look for what must come upon you to bring that thing you desire always like you lord in all the earth much less love and beauty and less work nothing in this world can satisfy jesus you're the constant Treasure of my heart and of my soul. Sing my witness, you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrong. You're the holder of my future days. And all my days on earth, I will away. The moment that I see you face to face. For nothing in this world is satisfied. Jesus, you're the God. Other things can run dry. But Jesus, you're the car that will run dry. Jesus, you're the car that will run dry. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are gathered here and we will always allow you to build, to change to lift any spirit within this vicinity that is not of the Christ I stand here right now if there be any force any yoke any agreement upon anyone's life i speak right now be set free be released now every other influence on your life that is not of the christ bringing you oppression programming failure to your life i stretch my hands and i command liberty right now in the name of jesus Please be seated. God bless you. Mm. This is Koinonia. The anointing that comes upon you when you come here 
is the Holy Spirit doing something within you because the words that you are hearing are not just carnal words it's not just a lecture the words you are hearing is spirit and life so while the word is coming something an anointing one of the true riches of the kingdom comes with the word too if you believe what I'm teaching you you will so dominate life in a way that will surprise you when you do not possess the riches of the spirit then every other thing becomes Lord over your life but those who dominate in this kingdom are those who possess the true riches of the kingdom hallelujah I have a new topic tonight but last week um, I was to give us six points on what the secret place is I gave us five and we had to stop because of the time let me quickly give us the last one please you can um, especially if you were here just go back to your notes and I'll give you the last point very quickly and then we'll go to tonight's discussion we discussed last week that the secret place is a place of brokenness we discussed that the secret place is a place where we obtain mercy that the secret place is a place of revelation where the mysteries and the strategies of the spirit are revealed to men especially the mysteries that's responsible for your destiny I'm lifting your family say the Spirit of God no this is not this is not for everybody I'm speaking to someone now I'm lifting your family it will be like a dream it will be like a dream I'm lifting your family 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 the Lord is bringing bringing a long period of struggle for a family to end that's what the Lord is doing a confusion of many years coming to end within a week completely within a week the Lord is speaking to someone here and he's saying I will visit you again of course everyone can receive but this is a particular revelation God is saying I am coming to you again the way I came before I am coming again I am coming again it will be in this month this month of June He will come to you again with a very strange encounter and you will receive something from that encounter that will change your life in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated so we said that number four that the secret place is a place where we find rest and comfort rest and comfort and then number five we said the secret place is a place of revival and restoration revival revival of fire revival of love revival of passion revival of grace revival of mantles revival of new dimensions in the spirit and then i'll give you the last one and then we'll go this is not the topic for today i just want to make sure we complete the note that the secret place is the place of spiritual empowerment we gain power not by strolling on the seat it is in the secret place that we find true spiritual power in a secret place you get the anointing for your personal life and in the secret place you get the anointing to accomplish God's agenda for a season 
you can be anointed as a believer but not anointed to be relevant for a season listen very carefully it is possible that i'm anointed if you come to me i can pray for you but as far as god's agenda within a territory is concerned it's possible that you are not relevant there is a special anointing that one is not the anointing for a believer that one is not even the anointing for your call and office it is the anointing that makes a man relevant within a season that's why you see many anointed people become voiceless after certain seasons they are still anointed they still love god but the anointing to play a key role in god's program is not there so although they are anointed you still get blessed but it's very clear that the lampstand is not on them within that season The Lord put a very serious topic in my heart tonight that I want to share. Tonight's topic is going to challenge you, is going to inspire you, and is going to provoke you. Pray in the Spirit for one minute. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Pray in the Spirit. Just pray in the Spirit for one minute. Just be sensitive to the instructions. You're allowing your spirit to contact something while you pray. Don't stop, keep praying. Yon, God most high, Jesus Christ is the Elyon of Israel. Elyon, God most high, Jesus Christ is the Elyon of Israel. God most high Jesus Christ Please be seated if you can Hallelujah sit down get something to write if you can unless understand what the Lord wants to help us I'm not sure we'll be able to complete it tonight contending for kingdom relevance part one mm. contending for kingdom relevance part one Contending for kingdom relevance, part one. This is a very powerful teaching that seeks to show you how you can become a voice. You can represent the voice of God to a generation and you can rise to a position of kingdom influence. Remember, we're still in a season where God has declared that he is lifting men. 
Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. Please give it to us. Just sit where you are. Something is lifting from your life. Lifting from your life. Lifting from your life. I change that situation now. I change that situation now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I change that situation now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I change that situation now. For David, Please give us Amplified. It says, For David, after he had served God's will and purpose and counsel, but he served it in his own generation. He said, fell asleep and was buried. But he said, David served God in his generation. It's not enough to serve God. It's enough to serve God within the context of a generation. Are we together now? There are mandates that are left for generations. Every generation has a spiritual curriculum about God and his purposes that God intends for them to accomplish and hear me your relevance within a generation is predicated upon your understanding your generation and knowing the corporate mandate that God has put upon that generation you can live within a generation and serve God but serve God in a way and manner that does not influence a generation it's not enough to serve God you must serve God in a way and a manner that brings the purposes of God to a generation. And this is what I want to teach you tonight. He said, David served God's will and purpose and counsel in his own generation, not another generation. Everyone that the Bible records that was used by God was used within the context of a generation listen very carefully if you miss relevance within your generation then you have missed relevance forever are we together i think i was teaching in lagos during the younger gilded program and i gave them an illustration no matter how anointed i am anybody above 55 years is not within the scope of my generation no matter how i love them they will be blessed from my life but they will quickly go to papa oyedeko and papa deboe because those are the voices of that generation are you getting what i'm teaching you now it's not enough to seek relevance you must seek relevance within the context of a generation your voice does not speak to every generation. There is a generation where your relevance is allocated to. God sends men not just to places, he sends men to a generation. And if you cannot identify your generation of impact and influence, then you will live a very useless life. And David, after he served the will of God, there are some things that are allowed in other generations that are not allowed in others 
Are we together? Every time God was about to move within the scope of a generation, he would find a man or he would find men and then begin to introduce them to the dynamics of relevance and greatness. Contending for kingdom relevance. There are things that we need to know if we are to rise to a point of kingdom influence and relevance and i've taught us again and again in this place that kingdom relevance is very important to have kingdom influence and it is also very important to be able to speak the purposes of god when you are unable to represent the purposes of God within a generation then you may not be able to to influence that generation Judges chapter 6 please very quickly we are going to read from verse 11 Judges chapter 6 this was an encounter that the Lord had with a young man called Gideon verse 11 and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which is in Ophrah and pertained to Joash and all of that and his son Gideon Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites remember they were being threatened by the Midianites and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said the Lord is with thee O mighty man of valor." and Gideon answered and said unto him O my Lord if the Lord be with us why then is this befallen us and where be all his miracles which our father told of saying this the Lord not do this and that and that 14 and the Lord looked upon him and said go in this thy might and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites have I not sent thee it didn't look to Gideon like he was sent but God said have I not sent thee with a message and a mandate to a people next verse 15 and he said unto him listen listen carefully he said oh my lord wherewith shall i save where not the whole world israel you have sent me with a message but that message is to a people and a context he said behold this is my limitation my family is poor in Manasseh and I am aside from the fact that the family is poor I am the least in my father's house look at the excuse he's giving God is telling him I am lifting you and then he says I cannot do the assignment because of two things one poverty There is a relationship between poverty and lack of influence and lack of relevance. Number two, lack of greatness. I am small. My family is small. And yet even in that family, I am the least in my father's house. 16. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord said unto him, Surely, I will be with thee and because of my presence with thee thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man follow me very carefully tonight <laughs> Jesus Psalm 24 and verse 6 he said this 
is the generation not this is the person listen carefully this is the generation that has a mandate as a generation to seek God but to seek God in the similitude of Jacob listen very carefully he's saying the word oh Jacob there is oh God of Jacob he said there is a generation mandated by God to seek God in the similitude of Jacob are we together now when God tells you to search for him he looks for human references that are reflections of that expectation are we together when God wants to teach believers to love he will lift up John and tell them to study his life when God wants to teach people how to walk in the blessing he lifts up Abraham and tells them to study his life in James chapter 5 when God is teaching people how to pray strategic prayer he lifts up a prophet called Elijah and says study him when God wants to teach people on faith he lifts up Peter when God wants to teach men on revelation he lifts up Paul the apostle are we together now so God is very figurative in his expression for you to understand this scripture you have to go back to Genesis 28 and Genesis 32 and study how Jacob sought God because he said that mandate that was on one man Jacob is a mandate that one day will come upon a generation that a generation will be mandated to seek the face of God in the similitude of Jacob are we together God appears to Jacob in chapter 28 and until that time listen carefully there was no God of Jacob when God revealed himself he said I am the God of Abraham there was a way I taught Abraham to seek me there were possibilities about me that no one had known but my encounter with Abraham introduced the world of men to these possibilities the God of Abraham then Isaac the son used the God of Abraham to create the God of Isaac the God of Abraham was a springboard the mysteries of God that his father knew and out of his own dealings with God God created a name called the God of Isaac by the time we get to Psalms here Jacob had done his own too and God names himself by a man's experience with him Jacob's encounter is so powerful that God's covenant people were not named after Abraham they were not named after Isaac they are not called the Abrahamites they are not called the Isaacites they are called the Israelites not even the Jacobites so powerful was this encounter that God said the generation that wants to know me must seek me in the similitude of Jacob you want to influence a generation God is lifting her, Dr. Halima. I'm seeing her climb a ladder. The Spirit of God is lifting her to a higher level of influence. That's what, that's what I'm seeing in the Spirit. You want to be relevant to a generation. If you love God and you desire that through your life His purposes be established, then you must contend for kingdom influence. I've taught you again and again in this place that kingdom advance is a product of two things. One is global evangelization. Number two, influence. The purposes of the kingdom must be established in the hearts of men through evangelism and then through influence must be established across every strata of human activities. Are we together? so you must know how to birth the purposes of God 
and I want you to follow me as I share with you there are certain things in the spirit that when you touch you will never be irrelevant please listen to me but most of what it takes to be relevant believers are not seeking it we are seeking nonsense all around yet we are looking for kingdom relevance the things that make for relevance in this kingdom are spiritual in context first in that order we are searching for mundane and carnal things that do not have the fortitude to give men a voice in a generation that's why I shared with you the secret place before coming to this topic. And David served his generation. I hope you know, listen very carefully. I hope you know that when the Holy Ghost came upon the apostles in Acts chapter 2, from then onwards, the strategic apostles that were listed in the Bible were not the only ones who received there were many other people but a few people grew to a point where their voices echoed through history to the point that they were captured in this bible when you study history not just bible history you study history and archaeology you will find out that many other spiritual things happen concurrently as at the time certain historic writings were being written spiritual things but they were not relevant to the context and the program of god within a generation it's amazing how people think because they are born again or they have a church or they have revelation they will continue to be relevant in god's program for all seasons no sir I have seen extremely anointed men and women of God and I have seen the boundaries of their relevance with respect to a generation I have seen people who are not too anointed but I've seen them at the epicenter of a generation's relevance there are men and women who would look at people like Joel Austin and look at people like Joyce Mayer and um, if you're one who is into the things of the spirit fasting prayer with all honor and respect you may not so much appreciate their ministry because of the context of their communication it sounds very basic yet in a way that looks as though it's a charm they have commanded the attention of a generation effortlessly unbendingly they have entered their sabbath in relevance and yet again and again we find anointed men miracle workers still scrounging scrounging at the doorways the corridors of relevance understand what i'm teaching you tonight and you will enter your sabbath there will be no need for competition there will be no need for unhealthy comparison because you will know that the keys of a generation has been given to you <laughs> you have captured my heart consume my heart with your love you have captured my heart consume my heart with your love one more time generation he peeped into another generation that was not his own and he wanted to still negotiate and God said no 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 you have tried Abba he wanted to start building a temple to start the mandate of another generation and God said you have tried you have tried you have tried David you have served God you have shed blood in the process just relax let your son 
take over. And he said, I must still contribute. Let me gather the materials. And God said, this man, David, you, you are a man after my own heart. And because of that, you may not serve in that generation, but I will show you. Look at the Messiah. And David saw a vision. The Lord said to my Lord, sit down. That was the coronation of Jesus. He said, David so longed, he, he mastered his generation. There was no other voice speaking. Samuel was a man who held the keys to the voice of God in his generation. You could brag and talk nonsense, but if you did not find Samuel, you would keep crying. It wasn't pride. Oh, God is everywhere. Yes, but there are gatekeepers. Samuel. Samuel. To the point that when a man was about to step into the anointing, God had to use a coincidence to lead him to Samuel. The Bible says of Samuel that none of his words, none of his words fell to the ground. But remember before Samuel started, there was a man called Eli that served the priesthood of his time. There was a period of more than 500 years of darkness from Malachi till the appearance of John. After prophet Malachi, it was somewhat a very dark season for the church. No prophecy, no nothing, everything. And all of a sudden, a young boy born to a man who began to manifest a level of priesthood called John the prophet was in the wilderness and all of a sudden for the first time they would encounter a prophetic voice they had lost touch with prophecy and then john was so wise he knew when his relevance was coming to an end and when jesus showed up showed up this is what he said that i may decrease i have exhausted myself jesus listen John remained relevant because he announced Jesus and he kept upholding Jesus. The moment he brought Jesus down, he died too with him. Although his mandate was over, he said, who is the next? Let me uphold him. Let me give you this secret. I want to teach you something powerful. If you are in ministry, never fight your sons. A father that fights his sons loses his honor. A son that fights his father loses his life. There are punishments allocated for the various offenses. Every time you see God lifting a man, join to lift it. If the last move of God always fights the next move of God, chances are that when we are in the program of God and a shift begins to happen, and God begins to raise other voices. The, the threat of feeling irrelevant begins to make people to not want to partner with what God is doing. And they now begin to fight it. And you cannot fight what is of God. You will go down. And so they go down together with it. Do you know why David's name still remained relevant? Lord, you will not allow me to build the temple. You said I've shed innocent blood. I would have been offended and David's name would have gone down. But he said, no, Solomon, I will gather the materials for you. Build the house. I will gather the material. Everybody who partnered with everything God was doing also remained relevant. That was the wisdom of the woman with the alabaster box. I'm a prostitute. I mean, I don't have a name. But Jesus, can I partner with your relevance? And Jesus said, anywhere they talk about me, this woman too, her story will be remembered. There are people all across this nation and all across the earth who by either because their assignment has come to an end or their lack of spiritual alignment has edged them out of God's program. Once upon a time, they were at the epicenter of God's program. But either because of pride or disalignment or just the assignment coming to end, 
you know why Billy Graham remained relevant he knew when he had served his generation and he created a legacy institute and all he was doing till he died was lifting all those who it was their generation and although he's dead he has been immortalized through his ability to lift men same thing with my dear mentor eternally dr miles monroe he died but his books brought him back to life he said body you can be laid to rest mind stand up and keep speaking miles monroe is still alive his body is in the grave but his mind is still in us we have kept him alive because he saw a generation one of the last books that he wrote before he died was passing it on the mystery not everybody will be relevant for our generation once upon a time papa ea adeboye grew with a generation and today he's old with that generation no matter how prophetic you are your mother would prefer to listen to papa ea adeboye than you i said it in lagos that even if i cut a human head and throw it down and carry it up and fix it back to show how powerful i am an old woman will look at me and say wow young man i'm impressed let me go to redemption camp quickly i'll see you later because even if they come for this program you were not sent to that generation the voice that grew with that generation is the voice that represents the purposes of god to them listen demons know this occultists know this believers do not know how to grow with a generation such that you become a dimension of god the four faces at the throne represented different dimensions of god what i am teaching you tonight will keep you relevant because by the time you are establishing this kingdom your generation will know you to be the face of something about god to them every time you talk of prosperity we go to Sam Adeyemi for his generation when you talk about faith and signs and wonders am I not a man of faith but you see our parents will not come to me as that reference I didn't grow with that generation to represent that dimension of God I'm teaching you how you cannot be erased in the purposes of God you want to stay relevant it's more than making money you must represent a dimension of God to a generation and grow with them knowing you to represent that by the time they are established they will educate themselves to look up to you by grace as a revelation of that dimension who is the Samadayami of our generation who is the Bishop Oyedeko of our generation who is the Papa Iya Deboy of our generation who is the WF Kumuyo of our generation? Who is the Apostle Babalola of our generation? It's not just giving yourself titles, I'm Apostle, nonsense, I'm, I'm Prophet, rubbish. That's not the issue. It's about staying. It is your generation that will call you, not you. The Bible said, they shall call you. The reward for being branded to represent a dimension of God is the name they call. Are we together? Some of us, your ministries right now have a lot of small children and teenagers and you are embarrassed because you are hoping that rich millionaires of 60 years will start coming to your church. You better thank God for sending a generation for you to grow with them. Are we together? I remember years ago when he and I started, there were a lot of young people, students all around and people would just look at it like a children's on the school class and i said oh dear those people that are children are now workers scattered all around you see that if papa Ia deboe says all believers in nigeria fast for three days whether you're a member of redeem or not 
you are going to fast. If your pastor said don't fast, you just respect him and pass and say nonsense. <laughs> you just started a church two years ago and you are telling me to disobey a man. He has represented the voice of God. Not just to Nigeria, but to the world. Contending for kingdom relevance. I will never lead a group of people who are anointed and not relevant. I have studied the systems of the kingdom and I have studied the limitation of the ignorance of anointed men of God. Men and women of God, especially in this nation, are very ignorant when it comes to the strategies for kingdom advance. The scope of our relevance is building individual capacities to love God. But the strategy for kingdom advance is seldom understood. And our generation is at the mercy of a bridge, a repairer of the bridge. Otherwise, we will have very heavy spiritual capacities and lose a voice territorially. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Five keys. Let me not waste your time. Straight to the point. Five keys. You want to serve your generation? Please, I want you to listen very carefully. To become influential enough to establish the purposes of the purposes of God within a generation. Number one, you must know God. You must know God. You want to serve the purposes of God. You must know God. Not you may know God. Not you can know God. You must have an encounter with God. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. The Bible ties exploits even within a generation to the knowledge of God. Are we together? It says such as do wickedly against the covenant he shall corrupt by flatteries he said but the people that do know they are god they are god let me tell you what that means to know god is not just to know the general god you must know the god revealed to your generation if you are in jacob's generation and you know the god of abraham alone you will not be relevant in jacob's generation every generation has a dimension of god revealed to it whoever finds that dimension is the person who becomes relevant within that context are we blessed but the people that do know their god they shall be strong and shall do exploits listen to me in this kingdom it is your fraternity with the spirit realm that culminates to your dominion and your victory ask any great man if they are honest enough they will tell you there is a certain level in this kingdom and in the world today you cannot rise beyond without a fraternity with the realm of the spirit whether in business in ministry listen carefully career whatever it is If you ever see anyone commanding any dimension of superior results, whether through occultism, whether in the it's secular or whatever, I can tell you beyond the secular knowledge and all of those things, a time came in their lives when they became assisted by the realm of the spirit. For 30 years, Jesus as the word, the living logos was powerless. But when the Holy Ghost came upon him, that partnership turned him into Christos, the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. You must know God. You must know God. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23 to 24. Please give it to us quickly. Jeremiah chapter 9. Thus saith the Lord, not an angel, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom our generation has many wise men who are poor many wise men who are broke many wise men who are not relevant at all the bible says first things first he didn't say wisdom is not important let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not the mighty man glory in his might let not the rich man glory in his riches 24 
but let him that glorieth glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me that's the pride of the believer your the foundation of your confidence in life should never be because of the car that is parked outside because of the food that is on your table because of your degree that is in your drawer are we together no. all those things only make sense when you are centrally connected to god those who will be relevant in these end times those who will defy the operation of demons those who will defy the causes and the yokes of culture those who will defy all the manipulations of darkness they are not just well-meaning people but those who know their god understand it and know it me are we blessed you go and prescribe this to someone who wants to be great and see how he will frown at you he won't exactly hate it he will just smile and be angry because he believes that when you want to be great just teach him business principles do this do that quickly you want to be great oh let me teach you on book publishing book publishing is the art of a that gives b this to c all those things are rubbish if you don't know god one yoke from your village can rewind your success is all you are you are you are laboring for nothing the bible says it is vain to wake up in the morning hear me nigerians wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow that's why many hard-working people are angry they look at life and say it's not fair and you are right i was a graduate since 1961 and i've not built a house now and look at all these small 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 boys sorry for you the foundation of relevance for every generation is not just your connection to god but your knowledge of god when last did you ever see this being prescribed as a formula for greatness and please those of you here who are into personal development and the rest is wonderful when you are teaching the secular you go ahead but when you are mentoring people let the foundation of growth be the realm of the spirit are we together you know you talk like this and a lot of people believe that you don't know what you're saying you don't know anything about secular success you're wrong you're wrong you must know god jacob had an encounter with god a nation has never been named after you a nation has never been named after your father and my father listen carefully a nation has never been named even after your president there is i'm not sure of any nation in the world that has been named after a man so when a man is so relevant that god's nation is named after him study how he rose up like that the foundation was not intelligence the foundation was an encounter genesis chapter 28 when you read from 11 to 17 he lighted upon a place and laid down on a stone to sleep and the bible says when you begin to read down to 17 that a ladder was connecting the earth to heaven listen very carefully and then at the top of it give us verse let's see verse 13 or 14 and listen behold the lord stood above it let's hear what god is saying god said i am the god of who god himself is calling himself the god of abraham so it's not something men are calling god himself called himself not i am the king of kings i am the god of abraham i am the god of isaac stop no other person had been interested in knowing me enough to add to the list that means it was never supposed to just stop as the god of israel i am the god of abraham the god of isaac i am the god of jacob uh-huh i am the root of david david added himself i am this and that then joshua selman too comes to add himself so that our children 
when you say i'm not saying you say the god of joshua selman i'm just teaching you how it is when you say the god of joshua selman it's not the same as the god of abraham i don't know what abraham saw i don't know what what his business was with god but there is a dimension you hear the people say the god of our fathers had appeared to me at that time jacob had not yet been in the list he says the land where out thou will this and that and that and that and then jacob woke up in the morning and said the lord was in this place and i knew not how terrible he said this is the house of god the gates of heaven the next encounter will be in chapter 32 and verse 22 please give it to us we're reading down to 30 chapter 32 from verse 22 22 32 22 chapter 32 and verse 22 let me read it from here chapter 32 and verse 22 and he rose up that night jacob now and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over forth jabbok 23 we're reading to 30 and he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had 24 and jacob was left alone jacob got to a point where everything that represented his relevance he had to give it away wives go possessions go everything go and when he was alone the reason why many of us may never encounter god is because there are many things together with us your money is still there your house is still there every other thing is there but when you are left alone he says and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day 25 and when he saw that he prevailed not against him he touched the strongest part that means you have been strong by yourself without me i see that you so love your decree to a point that every time i say i'm lifting you you smile and says because i'm an engineer of course i should be lifted it's because i'm a doctor it's because i'm an architect lord i know that contract and god's touched that area and said it may not always be by what you call strength it is by my strength and the hollow of jacob's tie was out of joint and he wrestled with him 26 and he said let me go god now for the day breaketh and he said jacob may that be someone's testimony that you say lord in this generation i don't just want to be a story i will hold on to you and people say look everybody is getting a job oh, everybody is moving and you say just leave me may god bless you but lord i cannot leave this place you see many graduates make a foolish mistake the moment they write their last exam they pour mineral on their head and joke around and play around tap water and immediately they are done they carry their bag and run and join the queue of confusion when you should stay back and have a two weeks retreat and lie down near one tree and say lord i'm not leaving this place until i f what will i tell my generation that i went to school for five years is that enough to give you a voice i entered somewhere in abuja and the receptionist had three mscs receptionist three mscs i said if you come to this place and it's grammar you want to talk you will be a foolish person three two of them were abroad and then one in the country receptionist don't think it's a small place a salary can let me just keep quiet Oh, don't don't think reception is like you are thinking one small kiosk no that's a place where only kings enter and i said my god you need more in this life brothers and sisters i'm not teaching you to be lazy but i'm telling you that if you want to command a voice you can carry your first class degree and get a job and meet somebody who was the son of a herbalist who also got the job with you and they say we are considering someone for promotion and he's laughing at you already he's pitying you because he knows one week to the promotion interview your leg refuses to move from your bed and you come to the office and he says well just to let you know that 
you have me you had that they say my father is a herbalist <laughs> the wicked world that we live in i know someone who was promoted true story sat down on his chair for the first time and died on the chair there they went to consult all kinds of people some habali says his wife that killed him some other habali says the guy that mops the the office that killed him it doesn't matter he's dead he's dead who killed you it's not a, you are dead can you know god to a point that someone is concocting a charm the first portion he drops fire response fire and says no no there are some touch notes ah, ah. he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain